everyone in the, this video we will be discussing regarding the process that is called as gastrulation but before we discuss the gastrulation so we shall discuss what all the changes have occurred during the process of implantation so implantation basically is as you know as we have discussed in the earlier videos also implantation refers to the attachment of the blastocyst to that of the endometrium where we had discussed that the outer layer of the cells of the blastocyst which are called as trophoblast so they gets up uh, distinguished into two types of the layers where one is called as a syncytial trophoblast the other one is called as a cytotrophoblast where the syncytial trophoblast cells are responsible for the formation or secretion of a hormone called as hcg where this hcg acts as an immunosuppressive agent which prevents which prevents uh, the rejection of the blastocyst which has been embedded into the maternal uh, uh, uterus or endometrium so that uh, uh, syncytial trophoblast as it secretes uh, hcg human chorionic gonadotropin so here there is a test which is being conducted so that is called as a gravidex test so this gravidex test uh, confirms the pregnancy in case of a human female whereas the cytotrophoblast which is being present so that cytotrophoblast cell is responsible for the formation of the yolk sac or the chorion so once the blastocyst gets embedded into the endometrium so further this uh, trophoblast or syncytial trophoblast cells which are present so they are responsible for the formation of the chorionic villi and thereby that results in the formation of uh, the placenta so later what happens after the entire process of the implantation so after implantation the next step what occurs in case of the embryonic development is uh, gastrulation so gastrulation basically refers to the process of formation of uh, the gastrula from the blastula so this gastrulation process occurs uh, third week after the fertilization and the significance of this gastrulation is uh, gastrulation is a process where there is a formation of the three germ layers namely endoderm ectoderm and uh, mesoderm so that is the significance where the three germ layers are formed and these germ layers are so important that these in future in the development of the embryo they are responsible for the formation of uh, the tissues as well as the organs of uh, the young ones so in case of the gastrulation so this particular the gastrula stage which is being present after the blastula it consists of more than hundreds of cells and these cells starts undergoing the cell morphogenetic movement or cell differentiation takes place so this uh, morphogenetic movement is where it may be the cell to cell addition may occur or it may be the cell proliferation or it even includes the cell differentiation so when all these changes occurs uh, this is what we call it as cell morphogenetic movements which occurs during the process of gastrulation now very important thing is if we consider the embryonic development from the diploblastic animals and the triploblastic animals in case of the diploblastic animals during the gastrula stage these diploblastic animals consist of two germ layers okay namely endoderm and ectoderm which means they lack the mesoderm whereas so there it is as there is presence of two germ layers there we call it as a bilaminar embryonic disk whereas in case of the triploblastic uh, animals there is presence of a trilaminar embryonic disk which consists of the three germinal layers or germ layers they are uh, endoderm ectoderm and uh, mesoderm so that is the significance as i said that is formation of uh, the germ layer now how this process of the germ layer takes place in case of the human embryo see in case of the blastocyst as we know the outermost layer are called as the trophoblast cells and the cells which are being present here so these are called as the inner cell mass and inner cell mass are the pluripotent cells okay inner cell mass are the pluripotent stem cells so these inner cell mass are responsible for the formation of the embryo proper 
and thereafter is a surrounding to that of the inner cell mass and the trophoblast a large cavity which is called as blastocoel is also present and this blastocoel in the later developmental stages that gets completely converted into yolk sac okay so what happens here so once the trophy once the blastocyst is being embedded into that of the endometrium there are various of the changes takes place in case of the trophoblast as well as the embryoblast so what are those changes that we'll discuss so the inner cell mass which is present or the embryo blast which are present so this inner cell mass starts differentiating into two types of cells where the cells which are present above so these cells are said to be the epiblast and these epiblast cells are the columnar in shape whereas below the epiblast cells there is presence of an another layer of the cell called as hypoblast cell and these hypoblast cells are cuboidal in shape okay so first the inner cell mass okay differentiates into a formation of two layer one is epiblast which is present above and the other one that is called as hypoblast so epiblast cells are present towards the outer part and hypoblast cells are present towards uh, the inner part now thereafter the trophoblast cells which are being present so these trophoblast cells okay so they uh, divide and differentiate to form the cells called as amniogenic cells so that amniogenic cells are responsible for the formation of the space in between the epiblast and uh, the amniogenic cells so that cavity which will be formed here so that is called as amniotic cavity and this amniotic cavity consists of amniotic uh, fluid and this amniotic fluid uh mainly it acts as a shock absorber which prevents uh, uh, whatever the pressure occurs to that of the fetus so that will be absorbed by the amniotic fluid which will be present in the amniotic uh, cavity so many of the functions are there of this amniotic fluid so that we'll discuss in the later classes now later what happens so these epiblast cells which are columnar in shape so these epiblast cells uh what happens is so they start uh, uh uh differentiating and thereafter there will be a formation of small a groove like structure so this small groove like structure which will be formed so that will be called as a primitive streak so this primitive streak which is being formed so that is generally formed at the day 15 and uh, that is located towards uh, the caudal end or you can call it as the posterior axis and uh, this primitive streak is said to be a uh, primary organizer very very important for any competitive exam primitive streak acts as a, a primary organizer and this primitive streak once it is being formed then the process of gastrulation gets uh, initiated so this primitive streak you can see so this primitive streak here so you can see that there is at the end there is a formation of a small a uh, bulb like structure so that is called as primitive node and inside the primitive node there is a presence of a small cavity so that is called as a primitive pit and this primitive pit is being a connection to that of the amniotic cavity to that of uh, the yolk sac so once the primitive streak is being formed at the caudal end it starts extending towards that of the cranial end or the cephalic end or the anterior axis and thereby uh, this primitive streak which is being uh, formed or which is gets initiated so that is very very important in case of the gastrulation stages meanwhile the epiblast cells as they are being forming the primitive streak on one side so here this uh, epiblast cells now makes this uh, hypoblast layer or hypoblast cell to start differentiating and thereafter once they start proliferating and differentiating the entire hypoblast layer now starts uh, getting covered to that of the entire blastocoel and thereby the entire hypoblast layer now gets connect, converted to that of the first germ layer that is called as uh, endoderm so that is what i have shown here the formation of the endoderm that is when the epiblast cells starts proliferating i mean it starts proliferating and thereafter 
the hypoblast cells which are present on the layer so that starts differentiating and proliferating thereby it uh, surrounds the entire blastocele thereby forming the first germ layer called as endoderm so this occurs in this portion now on the upper part you can see that in the surrounding to that of the, the what we say the epiblast cells so there is presence of a primitive streak which consists of a primitive pit and on the lower side where there is a presence of the endoderm so this consists of the primary yolk sac so the primitive pit which is present in the amniotic cavity so that is being connected internally to that of the primary yolk sac which means whatever the nutrients are being present in that of this yolk sac so that is being transferred to that of the amniotic cavity where it gives the nourishment to that of the epiblastic cells and apart from that of a primitive streak on the cranial end or the cephalic end there is presence of an another structure that is called as precordal plate is that clear so thereafter what happens later is you can see in the next uh, picture here the epiblast cells which are being present so these epiblast cells now starts uh, invaginating or you can call it as ingression so when the invagination takes place so some of the epiblast cells now gets uh, separated by that of the epiblast layer and now these cells which are being separated now these starts uh, differentiating and uh, once they start differentiating they start moving towards the lateral side and thereby it forms uh, the another layer that is called as the mesoderm so first thing you have to remember is the first germ layer which is being formed that is uh, endoderm where the endoderm is being replaced from of the hypoblast that is due to the action of epiblast cells thereafter is during the process of invagination okay epiblast cells will some of the epiblast cells will differentiate and thereafter they give rise to the formation of the mesodermal cells now these mesodermal cells starts proliferating on the lateral sides that is in between uh, the two layers okay so that layer which will be now formed that is said to be intra embryonic mesoderm why it is called as intra embryonic because this mesoderm which will be formed so that is in between the two layers okay so that is why it is called as intra embryonic mesoderm and majority of the epiblast cells which are being present which are surrounding the amniotic cavity so these now form an another layer that is called as ectoderm so finally the there are a formation of the three germ layers at the end of the gastrulation that is the first layer is endoderm thereafter is mesoderm and lastly is uh, the ectoderm so here as i said in the diploblastic animals or in case of the triploblastic animals also initial gas uh, gastrulation process consists of the two uh, layers of the cells namely epiblast and hypoblast cells so here we name it as a bilaminar embryonic disc so this bilaminar embryonic disc later in the later stages gets converted into three layers that is why it is called as trilaminar embryonic disc later what happens is the primitive streak which is present that extends and that results in the formation of the next structures which are to be formed so they are called as uh, the notochord so here very important point what you have to remember is primitive streak or the gastrulation process starts at the 15th day thereafter is uh, the formation of the ectoderm so this ectoderm also occurs on the 14th or 15th day and the mesodermal formation takes place during the 16th day of the gastrulation process so this is the entire uh, video which explains about uh, the process of gastrulation so as i said the significance of the gastrulation is a uh, formation of the three germ layers namely endoderm ectoderm and mesoderm and these three germ layers in future results in the formation of the different tissues and organs of the embryo thank you